Now let us move forward and learn about the mempool, also called as memory pool. So on a given network, the transactions are happening quickly as people in the network decide to make. But that doesn't mean that the network is capable of processing all of them at once. So as the number of transactions exceed the number of transactions the network can process, the waiting area or the waiting line goes up. And this waiting area or a buffer which holds the unconfirmed transactions or the transactions that are yet to be processed is known as the mempool. So the memory pool is also known as the mempool which is a waiting place or a waiting buffer for all the unconfirmed transactions before they are added to the blockchain. Now the name comes from the fact that the transactions sit in the RAM of all the nodes in the Bitcoin network. So when you start making transactions over the Bitcoin network, it doesn't happen immediately. This is because the transaction that needs to be completed needs to be confirmed and verified by the network nodes. This confirmation is done by the specialized nodes in the Bitcoin network called as miners. By validating the transactions before they get added to the blockchain, miners help ensure consensus on the blockchain. Now since there are so many transactions that are happening over the network, not all of them can get picked up immediately, right? So the transactions need to wait in line before they get validated. So this line or the storage space where the transactions wait is known as the mempool. So to better visualize the mempool, let us jump to blockchain.info and here if you see over a period of 30 days, this is the size of the unconfirmed transaction in bytes for the Bitcoin network. So here you can see the waiting transactions or the aggregate size of the unconfirmed transaction in bytes which is currently it is showing as 1.57 million. So here it shows the graph for the confirmed transactions per day and if we see the mempool transaction count. It gives you the total number of unconfirmed transactions in the mempool which you can see it's showing 1.7k right so around 1789 unconfirmed transactions now one needs to know the address to which you want to send the bitcoins so each transaction has its own hash which uniquely identifies that transaction now it's a way to tell people where to send the money when you are using the wallet. So you need to know the wallet address in order to send bitcoins to someone, right? Now we can also see the amount, time and the date of transactions. Now earlier we discussed that the transactions leave the mempool when the miner adds them to the block. So miners validate the transactions before they are added to the block and that block is added to the blockchain. So this process ensures security and validation on the blockchain. So now we know the transaction leaves the mempool and joins the blockchain. However, this is not the only way that the transaction might leave the mempool. Some other reasons for transactions leaving the mempool are that if a transaction has been sitting for too long in the mempool, it will be removed, right? Next case could be that assume all the transactions are sorted by the fee size with the lowest transaction fees at the bottom. So if the mempool reaches its size limit and a new high transaction fee is accepted to the mempool, the transaction with the lowest fees would then be pushed out of the mempool. So to explain that, let us take an example. Let us say the various transactions have these fee sizes, so 2, 3, 1, 2.5 and 5. So for this, let us assume all the transactions are sorted by fees size with the lowest transaction fees at the bottom. So after sorting, we will get 5, 3, 2.5, 2 and 1. Now let us say the mempool reaches its size limit and a new high transaction fee is to be accepted to the mempool. Say the new transaction has a fees of 6.5. So in this case, where the mempool size is 5, you would need to eliminate this one from your mempool and then the 6.5 would be added to the mempool. Make sense? So the transaction with the lowest fees is kicked out of the mempool if a new transaction with a higher transaction fee is to be added to the mempool, right? Assuming that the mempool has reached its size limit. Make sense? 
Now confirming Bitcoin transactions requires a lot of computation energy. That means a lot of electricity. So every time a sender will put out a transaction, they can add a transaction fee. So you can think of it as a tip to the miner. So not all the transactions will come up with such transaction fees. Miners can look through all the possible transactions in the mempool, so in the waiting area, and see which one has the transaction fees and look at their values, right? So the transactions which have higher fees, so they will choose to validate those. The reason that the transactions wait in the mempool is in the hope that they will get validated. Then they can leave and permanently be added to the blockchain once they get validated by the miners. So the transactions or one of the older unconfirmed transactions might conflict with one of the transactions that were already confirmed in the block. So remember that blockchain keeps a permanent history of the transactions. So once a transaction is included in a block, it is concluded to have a single confirmation. So as soon as another block is mined on the same blockchain, the transaction has two confirmations. So transactions continue to get confirmations as soon as more blocks are added to the blockchain. Now since more confirmations are considered sufficient proof that a transaction cannot be reversed, so there is 99.99% confirmance rating that there are no errors in the transactions that are being added to the blockchain. This means that if the transaction in the question conflicts with what is already in the blockchain, the chances are that there is something wrong in it and that the transaction will have to be denied and leave the mempool. So now we know some of the cases in which the transaction can leave the mempool. It is important to note that the transactions that are left are always welcomed back, for example, when they are received over the network. So from mempool, the miners will bundle up the transactions into the blocks that will be added to the blockchain. Now there are cases when the transaction leaves the mempool but still doesn't make up to the blockchain. It could be in the case when the transaction is invalid or maybe it got timed out. So a mempool in the end is a temporary buffer for checking out our work before adding it permanently to the blockchain. So to sum it up, the purpose of this holding pool is to provide transaction security. So once the transaction is included in a block and that block has received six confirmations, meaning five additional blocks have been added to the blockchain, then that block is considered as irremovable and it will require immense amount of computational energy to validate and recalculate those six blocks. So the information on the blockchain is not checked once, twice or thrice but six times to ensure security. So this was all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we will see how a block gets committed to the blockchain. So in the next video, we will learn about the consensus mechanism that happens in case of a blockchain.